Seoul Dynasty leading into Overwatch League Season 1 were supposed to be the top team, was supposed to be the pinnacle, one of the best teams to, to kind of set the tone and set the pace for playoffs, future and present. They were a part of the top three Korean giants of London Spitfire, the New York Excelsior, and obviously the Seoul Dynasty. And they were the teams. They were the teams to beat. Now, two of those teams managed to kind of keep that prestige and, and really rise to the occasion throughout the season. And Seoul started strong, but ended kind of middling. And those same issues that plagued them in season one, for me, I don't think they've been rectified going into season two, at least from the information that we have currently available to us. So if we're going to look at those signings, we have to start with Jexe, who, in my opinion, is the strongest signing that they've made. And even that has a lot of questions around it for me. He comes from Element Mystic. He's been rumored around, you know, the clock. Is he going to Atlanta? Is he going elsewhere? Is he going to a full Korean team? It's been, you know, all over the place, but now we know he's going to the Seoul Dynasty. And a lot of those rumors have been substantiated by the fact that he's a very vocal member of the teams that he's played for in the past, most notably Element Mystic. Now, is that is that a question answered? Yes, I do think that this is a great addition to the team because they've been lacking in, in very direct shot calling. They've looked a little bit like London Spitfire and Apex they're in C or stage four of the Overwatch League, where their dives look a little all over the place. So hopefully he can kind of get them funneled into a spearhead and really start to work on those fundamentals where they're diving on the same targets or they're they're al at least allocating resources in a way that's a little bit more focused and less uh, broad and all over the place. Now, one of the kind of bigger signings that they've made very early on in the postseason was adding the Los Angeles Gladiators main tank and former London Spitfire main tank Fissure to the team. And this has my, uh, I, I would say this is my biggest question mark for the team. Uh, we all know Fissure to be very mechanically strong, correct? I don't think anybody would debate me there. And I think everybody watching at home would probably agree with me that he's a very, very good main tank. It's everything outside of that that worries me um he seems like a very uh one-dimensional player he 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 feels like he can he has a very distinct style that a team needs to facilitate for him and if he can't have that then things start to break down whether it's this very fiery public persona um if that's indicated inside of a team it's it's difficult to to be able to know because i'm not in the team but from just what he shows the public from how he handled the situation with slasher and whatnot i have my question marks he kind of feels a little bit fiery in a sense that's my kind of uh my kind of go-to for fissure while he's very very good fire can burn you right in that sense Fire can be a tool if you can use it correctly, but if you misuse it, it can be very dangerous to your team. Now, who does that sound like? To me, that kind of reads as just a slight upgrade over Miro, and that was one of my biggest issues kind of mid midway through Overwatch League Season 1 is, you know, I don't know if Miro necessarily is up to the task anymore or if things aren't necessarily working for him and the team. I kind of wanted Miro to stay on board. I think he actually had a little bit more left in the tank if they could restructure the team and and really try to, to break down some of his bad habits. But I think he actually had a purpose in this team. I think he actually could have played very well as a two-way player, if not as a, uh, a, a kind of a second string comfort pick, putting him in when the Winston was needed. Now we have Fissure. Again, both players are very emotional. They have very distinct play styles. While I think Fissure probably is the better leader, he kind of is, is a dictator in that sense. He, he wants all the power on him. And if he doesn't necessarily trust your calling, I don't. I, I worry that that kind of player in esports history may come out of Fissure. And it could he could butt heads with Jex's calling mid-game. Things might not necessarily look uh, great in that category. But I do think Fissure is mechanically good. That's not a question, but how does this team use him? Can they have him adopt the team strategy, the team kind of uh, cohesion model? Can they really tame him in a sense to fit within this team? I, I don't know. If anything, I actually have to say I, I don't think they can. 
if we look at the coaching staff that are apparently going to be leading this team, there's there's some some very prominent members of coaching staffs in the past, and there's some ones that have have some things to prove. We have a Hokery from GC Busan in Apex Season 4, Royal Rotors, don't you really need to explain much there, at the GM position. Now, if that's something that he did last season anyways, it makes sense. Um, KDG from Snakes in Europe, um, I think he was a former Brewer player, so hopefully he has a lot of, of information and kind of can command respect in this team. But as of right now, he doesn't have a ton of coaching experience in the past, um, or at least in Overwatch. So I'm, I'm kind of, I have my questions there. I'm not necessarily worried about the coaching staff, but there is some things um, left up to interpretation. And uh, that was a big thing leading out of season one is the staff or the structure of the staff needs to change because it was repeated over and over and over that there was too many cooks in the kitchen. Now, that could mean a, a slew of different things, but the way that I'm reading how Soul took that, how Soul took their problem is that things just needed to be restructured. It wasn't that they needed or they had too many cooks in the kitchen. Things just need to be restructured behind the scenes. So we've got a main support who can call, a main tank who can lead, but is a little bit fiery, is a little bit, uh, you know, has has some, some uh, emotional uh sides to him and then we've got two players added from lucky future zenith in marvel and michelle and these really don't make much sense to me these kind of echo in the same sense kooky and zephyr two players that very seldom saw play time but could be very very strong in a developmental case so i think these are probably either going to be perma bench players or they work their way on to Soul Academy, if that's going to be a thing. They're, you could sign them as two-way players, and I wouldn't be mad at that at all. Is that is that what's going to happen? It hasn't been announced publicly that that's what's going to happen, so it's it's hard for me to, to say whether it is or not. But if I, had, if I was playing GM for Soul Dynasty, I take these two players, I bring them in, they have talent. Marvel looked great in Lucky Future. Michelle probably was one of their weaker players, but again... They're the, the biggest roles that I think need to be filled at the moment leading into season two are flex tank and supports. So if you can bring a flex tank that has promise that is willing to listen, is willing to work, and you put them on your, your academy team or you put them in a contenders team and you kind of keep them keep them regulated and you keep you keep his performance in check, that could be beneficial for them in the future. Zumba is gonna get sick. He's gonna get injured sooner or later. Every player goes through it, every player has has burnout. It's been an issue in Overwatch League Season 1, so you need a backup there. And if Michelle can be that backup, if Marvel can be that backup for Fissure, then that's great. That's awesome. Um, now, looking at the comparison for their main tanks throughout their life cycle, um, Marvel, again, feels a lot like Kuki. It feels um, almost similar, in a sense, to Fissure that um, they're very aggressive, they're very confident, almost overconfident at times, and they need to be kind of reeled in. And then you go, look, you need you need a coaching staff to really guide them. And Marvel is just a, a, a mini fissure in my eyes. So again, lots of overlapping, a lot of questions that haven't been asked or, or answered. There's a lot of questions that have been asked, but none of them have really been answered for me. While I do think that Jexa is a very prominent piece in this team, and I, and I really am excited to see what that back line looks like. I'm worried that, you know, the same issues from season one rear their heads. The team kind of self implodes, emotions run high. While the games have been reduced, the preparation has not. And I expect, if anybody, the Korean teams to really lead in that category and, and be uh, diligent in their practice. So I don't think that that's going anywhere. I think the preparation time for season two is, if, if not higher, because you're giving them more time to prepare. It's up to the coaches to decide if they you know, need more preparation or if they don't. But I, I, I worry about this team. I want I want to I want to like this team. I want to I want to see Apex season two, Apex season three, Lunatic High in this team. I want them to have that same resolve and and be able to kind of check those emotions. And on paper, New coaching staff, new new structure. Maybe it works. Maybe maybe they can knock Fisher out of the park and and really kind of adopt him into the structure. Maybe it's the case. 
maybe they have two developmental players of Marvel and Michelle that looked that look very strong and in, in sub games and could lead them into a strong season three or a stronger season three. That's that's all on the table. I, I don't really know. We have to the, the proof of concept isn't there in that sense. But if we're going to be reasonable, if we're going to be rational, um, I, I worry about this team. I worry that history is going to repeat itself. They adopt an emotional main tank. Their their main tank and DPS don't necessarily gel. There's issues with calling. The team gets divided. They butt heads, and we end up in tenth. That's that's my worry. That's my concern for this team. And hopefully, maybe there's more signings on the horizon. Who's to know? I have no idea. If they do sign a third string DPS again, I grade them a little bit higher. I do think that Fleta needs someone else. You know, Munchkin's solid. He's a solid tracer. His, you know, he's got some other heroes to him. But I think Fleta is their their kind of franchise player. They're going to try and build around him. And he needs someone else to either prepare for new patches or he needs someone else to kind of take some of the the weight away in out of that hero pool because Munchkin is very limited. He's very much a hit scan player. Doesn't have much projectile to him. That kind of makes Fleta your go to projectile, but can hit scan very well. If not to a the, to the same degree that he can hit scan a projectile, it's a very very uh, a close race for me. If you can sign someone again in the same vein as Marvel and Michelle, maybe not necessarily a two way player, but sign him just to kind of uh, accept that he will be rotated in at a later date, and and just use him to prepare for the future and prepare. And help maybe even teach the DPS to really kind of add to that thought pool. Um, if that happens, then I do grade them higher. Um, but as it stands right now, uh, I worry. I worry that this team is going to end up uh, anywhere from uh, 10th to, we'll say 8th. Hmm, we'll say 9th to uh, 13th place in the regular season uh, throughout stage 1, 2, 3, 4, and even the seasonal playoffs. So. We'll, we'll even I'll even hope to make the seasonal playoffs. As a soul fan, I I, I worry, and um, yeah, it's uh, well, we'll have to end on a somber note. So, thanks again for watching. Hopefully, you know if you, if you if you have any questions, if you you know if you're a little bit more bullish on Soul Dynasty, leave a comment below. Tell me why I'm wrong. Tell me why I'm an idiot. Tell me why you think that Soul's gonna crush it and win the, win the league. I'd love to know. Maybe I'm maybe I'm missing something. So if you if you think that I'm missing something, hit me up below. Hit me up on Twitter. And uh, until the next video, uh, I'll see you guys later.